In today's day and age, electric cars are no longer a distant dream of the future. There are cars by manufacturers big and small that are battery powered. Today there is an abundance of EV concepts and production cars. But when we say electric vehicles, the first thing that comes to mind is the name Tesla, right? The yet unbeatable EV giant of the Silicon Valley led by the real-life Tony Stark, Elon Musk. But do you know that there's a company that was to become a Tesla killer? Press the button and it will find its way to the garage. Whoa. What? Ooh. Okay, it seems okay. like it's uh, a little bit uh, lazy tonight. That would be Faraday Future for you, aka FF. The Silicon Valley-based EV startup company Faraday Future was founded in April 2014 by Chinese billionaire Jia Yuting, otherwise known as YT. The company was named after Michael Faraday, who was one of the founding principals of the electric motor. But oh wait! Tesla, Nikola Tesla, electricity, electric cars? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. An attempt at true American rivalry, perhaps. Founder Jia Yuting, aka YT, is a Chinese businessman and has numerous ventures and startups to his name. Starting his career as a tax office tech support in the Shangxi province, YT entered the communication industry. YT founded Li.com in 2004, a technology company and one of the largest streaming services for on-demand movies and TV shows, aka the Netflix of China. YT's many businesses include the Lei Shi Holding Group, formerly known as Lei TV. He founded the smartphone company Lee Echo and Lee Sports, part of Li.com. YT, having amassed a fortune through his business in China, had already started chasing a new dream. When Faraday Future came into the EV industry, it had equipped itself with a star cast of game-changing employees from a great number of companies from 2014 to 2016, which included Stacey Morris from BMW, David Wisniewski of the Ford Motor Company, and James Chen along with a whopping 1,500-plus employees from Tesla. The introduction of Faraday Future to American markets in 2016 came quite suddenly, and there was no mention of the founders and the CEO. So it was thought to be a front for Apple's car building efforts because of all the secrecy that surrounded its origins. However, YT later clarified that he introduced Faraday Future to take on tech giants Google, Tesla, and Apple, who were working on their own versions of electric car. In 2016, Faraday Future announced its entry into the US markets at Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco, claiming to challenge Tesla. And of course, there are companies that have shown great electric vehicles and what they can do. And while these companies inspire us, really what they're doing is just a slight progression on where we've been before, what already exists. Unfortunately for the company, the group of highly experienced and expensive veterans who were headhunted from Tesla, Google and Ford did not stay there because of the gradual downfall of the company. On November 2015, Faraday Future had announced its plans to build a manufacturing plant in Nevada with a billion-dollar investment. You know, the same state where Tesla was already building its Gigafactory. The stage was set for Faraday Future, but later, the company dropped the idea of its megafactory due to financial issues, even after the Utah government offered $1.3 billion in tax incentives. In 2017, Faraday Future made a big splash at CES with its luxury SUV. The FF91 was unveiled with huge fanfare at the Consumers Electronics Show CES, in Las Vegas. This flagship model, priced at around $180,000, as per inside information, looked futuristic and promised to be loaded with the latest and in-house tech. In terms of looks, the car did make Tesla look like amateurs. Even Michael Bay paid $5 million to use the FF91 in the movie Transformers The Last Night. Faraday claims that the car accelerates faster than the Tesla Model S or any other electric car in production, at 0 to 60 in 2.39 seconds. Faraday claimed that the FF91 was the fastest production vehicle at that time. Not anymore. Apart from that, the main difference between Tesla and FF91 is that the former is a production vehicle and the Faraday is not. 
The features on offer and quality of the material combined with a possible range of 482 miles when driven at 55 miles per hour made FF91 look like a true Tesla killer. And that could be seen in the response that the car garnered at CES. See what it can do. Unfortunately, Faraday's car did not respond during the unveil. It was a huge embarrassment for the company. It was an awkward moment when the car just refused to respond. Nick Sampson, then product architect and VP, was almost apologetic to YT. But nonetheless, hiccups happened, and thousands of reservations were placed. The company announced that production would start by early 2018, and then it went bankrupt. Faraday Future was funded, for some part, by YT himself, but most of its funding came from Chinese investors, most of which were small businesses who were assured a low-risk investment with returns worth 10 times the amount. He also sought investments from China's questionable banking systems. One of the former investors of the companies had said to The Guardian that many big investors were willing to invest millions of dollars in the company only on the condition that Jia Yutang steps down from his post as the CEO of the company. In 2017, Jia Yutang fled from China to escape the debt of millions of dollars, but he landed in a similar place when it came to his American startup business, Faraday Future. He filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the US. Many investors didn't want to invest money in Faraday Future due to YT's reputation and bad decision making. Most of the investment offers that Faraday Future got wanted YT to step down, but he was not willing to give up control of his company. Faraday Future desperately needed money to stay afloat, and even after spending billions of dollars jumping from making a race car to an SUV, it still didn't have a single car in production. Experience has shown YT that it's easy to make a car, but mass manufacturing on the other hand, not a cakewalk. YT accumulated over $6.6 .6 billion of debt in total while repaying only $3 billion. As of today, Faraday Future was forced to sell its headquarters for $500 million to keep the company alive. YT has since stepped down from the post of CEO, but is not altogether out of the company. Manufacturing cars is no easy feat. We all know that Elon went nearly bankrupt in order to keep Tesla alive during the financial crisis of 2008. But the main difference between Elon and YT is that one is doing it to change the world and wean it off crude oil, while the other… we don't know. Faraday Future tried to replicate Tesla in every way possible. Copying other businesses and ventures might work very well within China, but one thing you can't replicate is your passion, zeal, internal drive, and engagement with meaningful work that makes one a true entrepreneur. Before I end this video, I just want to say that we do need entrepreneurs following in the path of Elon Musk. Not literally, but in the path that makes your life meaningful. We can't blindly follow in someone else's footsteps. We all have our own journey. We still can't write off Faraday Future as a failure. Maybe there's still a light for Faraday Future at the end of the tunnel. I personally hope Faraday Future succeeds. We need many more players in the EV business. It surely will encourage more competition in the EV sector. With that being said, we leave you right here. Do like the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more of our videos. See you next time.